In the distant past, the lands that today lie on both sides of the China-Korea border were inhabited by related peoples whose movements and kingdoms would knit together the ancestries of East Asian populations. Archaeological and genetic studies now reveal that from the Neolithic onward, the ancestors of Koreans and many peoples of Northeast China were part of a common East Asian heritage. By the Bronze Age, roughly 3000 Tyrone to 1000 BC, a dramatic population expansion from China's interior helped shape this shared ancestry. Researchers have identified early agricultural communities in the West Liao River Basin, in modern Liaoning, Inner Mongolia, dating to about 3,2500 BC. Genome analysis suggests these millet-farming West Liao River peoples were the primary ancestors of later Koreans, and to an extent the Japanese. In fact, one major study concluded that Bronze Age farmers of West Liao do appear to be an excellent candidate for the primary source population for present-day Korean and Japanese people. In practical terms, this means that as farming communities spread from northern China into the peninsula, they brought not only new crops and tools, but also their genes. The archaeological record echoes this migration. Bronze Age mandolin-shaped bronze daggers first appear in Liaoning, and then on the Korean peninsula, indicating cultural and demographic links at that time. Thus, by the late prehistoric period, the genetic makeup of proto-Korean tribes had deep roots in northeastern China. Genetic studies reinforce the picture that early Koreans and their neighbors spanned the modern borderlands. For example, Y chromosome surveys show that the dominant male lineage in Koreans, haplogroup O2B SRY465, now found in about one third of Korean men, originated roughly 9,900 years ago in Northeast Asia. Its age and variation pattern suggest it arose in inland Manchuria or nearby, then later expanded southward onto the Korean peninsula. Overall, the evidence agrees with linguistic and archaeological clues. The direct ancestors of Koreans were proto-Koreans who inhabited the northeastern region of China and the Korean peninsula during the Neolithic and Bronze Ages. In other words, the peoples who would become Korean were once spread across both Manchuria and Korea, and did not live only on the peninsula. These ancient Koreanic populations would later coalesce into historic kingdoms. But their Neolithic and Bronze Age homeland covered parts of what is now China. By the first millennium BC, state-level kingdoms emerged in this shared cultural zone. The oldest of these in the Korean tradition is Gojoseon, founded in legend in 2333 BC and attested by around the 4th-3rd centuries BC. Archaeology shows that Gojoseon's reach extended well into today's Liaoning province and beyond. In the 1960s, a joint Chinese-Korean excavation in Liaoning uncovered a royal necropolis of Gojoseon. 23 tombs containing about 140 bodies, each with rich grave goods, including the characteristic mandolin-shaped bronze daggers of Gojoseon elites. These highly standardized dagger burials are unique to Gojoseon culture, and their abundance in Liaoning led archaeologists to propose that Gojoseon's capital, Wangjumseong, might have been located there. In other words, an early Korean kingdom was already ruling major cities in what is now Chinese territory. Notably, the bronze artifacts from Liaoning Gojoseon sites differ significantly from contemporary Chinese dagger styles, underlining their distinct origin. Thus, Gojoseon was not confined to the peninsula. Its people and culture occupied a corridor across the northern borderlands, contributing their DNA to those regions for centuries. Gojoseon eventually fell to China's Han Dynasty in 108 BC, and Han authorities set up commanderies in the north. However, these new Chinese colonial regimes lasted only a few hundred years before local powers rose again. The most powerful successor was Goguryeo, Koguryo, which had grown out of the Buyo Confederation. Legend says Goguryeo was founded in 37 BC by Jumong, Dongmyong Zongguang, who was in fact a prince of Buyeo, a state centered in southern Manchuria. 
As Goguryeo expanded, it absorbed Buyo itself and conquered neighboring tribes. By the 4th and 5th centuries AD, Goguryeo had become the dominant force in the region. According to historical records, during the reigns of Kings Gwangaito, 391-412, and his son Jiangsu, 413-491, Goguryeo's domain included the entire northern half of the Korean peninsula, and in what is now China, the Liaodong Peninsula, and a considerable portion of Manchuria. This means that, at its height, Goguryeo ruled the lands of present-day Liaoning, Jilin, and parts of Inner Mongolia and Heilongjiang. Goguryeo kings even claim to have subdued the Sushin peoples, ancestors of the Tungusic Jurchens Liaon Manchus, in the far northeast. Importantly, the capital of Goguryeo was originally at Huando in modern Jian, Jilin, China, before being moved south to Pyongyang in 427 AD. Thus, for several centuries, a large part of China, S. Northeast, was governed by a kingdom of Korean lineage and the people in those border regions, whether Korean Buyo or other allied tribes, became subjects of Goguryeo. They would have been absorbed into its social and genetic fabric, leaving descendants in the region. When Goguryeo fell in 668 AD to the allied Tangsila forces, its territories were again contested. Some Goguryeo aristocrats fled east and founded the state of Balhe, Parhe, in 698 AD. Balhe took in northern parts of the former Goguryeo realm, straddling what is now northeast China and the Russian Far East as well as northern Korea. Like Goguryeo, Balhe's elite were Korean in origin, from Goguryeo, Buyo stock, while its population also included large numbers of Mohe, Malgal people, ancestors of the Yurchins. Chinese and Japanese sources preserve Balhae's own claim to Korean heritage. A Balhae envoy, writing in 727, claimed that Balhae had recovered the lost land of Goguryeo and inherited the old traditions of Buyo. In other words, Balhae saw itself as the restoration of Korean rule in Manchuria. Although Balhae was later conquered by the Kitan Liao dynasty, 926 AD, and its people mixed into new regimes. It lasted for over two centuries and thus represented another major Koreanic presence in China. Even today, some archaeological sites of Balhe lie in Heilongjiang and Jilin, testifying that the heritage of Goguryeo Balhae dynasties extended well into what is now Chinese territory. After Balhae's fall, Manchuria was ruled successively by Kitan, Jurchen, who founded the Jin dynasty, Mongol Yuan, Ming, and Qing. Throughout these times, the local populations remained ethnically mixed, descendants of Goguryeo, Buyo, Mohe, Kitan, and others. For example, the Jurchens, later Manchus, regarded Goguryeo as part of their ancestral lore. In the early 12th century, Yurchin chieftains appealed to Balhae natives on the basis of shared origin in the northeast. Moreover, in the Ming and Qing periods, the borders again shifted. Joseon Korea at times moved people northward under Chinese sponsorship. In the 17th century, the Korean king Hyojong even proposed conquering Ming-held Manchuria to reclaim former Goguryeo lands, though these plans never materialized. After 1881, a famine relief project sent hundreds of Korean farming families into Liaodong. By the early 20th century, there were large Korean-speaking communities along China's northeast border. After World War II, these communities, the Kaioxianzu or Joseonjok, became an officially recognized ethnic minority in China, mainly in Yanbian, Jilin, and parts of Liaoning and Heilongjiang. Over many generations, intermarriage occurred, but these Koreans retained much of their language and identity. In short, historical flows of peoples, voluntary and forced, ensured that Korean ancestry did not stop at the Yalu and Tumen rivers. Modern genetic surveys confirm the deep continuity across the China-Korea frontier. 
a 2023 genomic study of ethnic Koreans and Manchus in Northeast China found that both groups carry the signature of Northern East Asians. In particular, Chinese Koreans, residents of Jilin's Antu County, for example, show long-term genetic continuity with Bronze Age populations from the West Leo River region and cluster most closely with contemporary South Koreans and Japanese. This means that the local Koreans in China are almost as related to Japanese as to Koreans, reflecting their shared ancestry. The same study noted that Manchus in Liaoning are also Northern East Asian in genetics, with an extra admixture from Southern Chinese, but with no West Eurasian influence. In simpler terms, both the Korean minority and even the Manchu minority in China today retain the legacy of those ancient Northeast Asian farmer-fisher populations. Another way to see it is that the peoples of Northeast China, Han, Korean, Manchu, etc., belong to the same broad genetic cluster, whereas Southern Chinese populations have slightly different ancestry. For example, Modern Han Chinese derive most of their genes from Neolithic Yellow River farmers, while Koreans and Chinese Koreans derive a large part of theirs from the same West Liao River lineage. The upshot is that in today's genetic data, Koreans and Northeastern Chinese look very similar. One expert summary noted that Han Chinese, Japanese and Korean populations have distinct makeup, but are genetically closely related as groups. Taken together, the archaeological record and DNA evidence tell a consistent story. For much of antiquity, the borderland of northeast China was home to a blend of Koreanic and local ethnic groups. Kingdoms like Gojoseon, Goguryeo, and Balhae not only influenced Korean history, but actually ruled territory now in China. When these states fell, their people did not vanish but merged into the succeeding population. Today, many inhabitants of Liaoning, Jilin, and Heilongjiang carry a genetic heritage that traces back to those Korean-linked ancestors. A clear hint comes from Y-chromosome studies. The O2B haplogroup that is characteristic of Koreans is found at elevated frequency in Han, men of northeast China, though rare in southern China, indicating gene flow from those old northerners. Likewise, genome-wide surveys show that Northeast Chinese cluster with Koreans and Siberians, consistent with those ancient ties, while Southeast Chinese form a somewhat different branch. In short, Korean DNA in modern China shows up most strongly in the Northeast, where history placed Korean polities. This does not mean China's population is made up of Koreans. Rather, it means that all East Asians share common roots and that the subpopulation of Northeast China retains the imprint of Korea's first states. To sum up the shaping of modern China by Korean DNA has been a long, complex process. Over millennia, populations flowed back and forth across the Northeast Asian frontier. From Neolithic hunter-gatherers to Bronze Age farmers to Iron Age kingdoms, the ancestors of Koreans and many northern Chinese people remained intertwined. Archaeological cultures, like the Liaoning Dagger culture, and historical states, Gojoseon, Goguryeo, Balhae, spanned both sides of the modern border. Genetic studies have made this clear. Koreans and Chinese are not distant cousins, but part of one continuous East Asian family. In particular, China say S Northeast, once the heartland of Korean-influenced kingdoms, still bears that legacy in its genes. Thus, the story of Korean DNA in China is one of gradual blending. Ancient Koreanic rulers and migrants planted lineages in Manchuria that survived through conquest and assimilation. Today's Northeast Chinese, whether Han, Korean, or otherwise, carry faint but measurable echoes of Goguryeo's soldiers and Buyeo's farmers. That shared genetic heritage is a reminder that human history knows few hard borders and that the peoples of China and Korea have long grown from the same ancestral tree.